Content over everything. It's Captain Scarlet and I'm here in Suits Direct with Dean Okai, a rising community leader for sure. And we're here today to discuss a little bit about black economics, black group economics, um, Pan-African black betterment movements and some ideas around some of the stores and blocks to that. And actually I'm um, looking at some of the ongoing works that are in progress today and updating you on that. So um, yeah, I'll just get into that a little bit. I think one of the things that I definitely want to touch on today is also a conversation that Raven had recently on Content Over Everything about delusions of grandeur and some of the delusions sometimes that we have of our enemy even mm -hmm. in terms of what it is that we're facing and maybe we, we build up a bigger monster than we really need to and so therefore we don't even bother fighting this after a while so Absolutely. to some extent yeah but okay i'll start off with um, um group economics but i want to talk a little bit about you so you this shop as i understand it's coming to its 10th anniversary how did you go about um starting up your own black business well i've always done it um there are opportunities the first thing i'll say before we into that is i'm not a black leader mm. i'm a project manager mm. Um, one of my specialities is putting teams together, identifying talents, correlating those talents and making them work and gel. So that's just project management. Mm. Yes, it's a leadership skill, but I'm not any leader. So I'm a project manager first and foremost. Because <laughs> when, when I hear delusions of grandeur, I'm not going <laughs> to get involved, <laughs> I'm not gonna get involved yeah. in them. Yeah. So um, I've had businesses since I was 18. Mm. And... I always enjoyed business. My first business was stealing adult magazines, tearing out the pages at school and selling them for tuck money. I was eight years old. Um, again, when I was clapping barrel pens and selling them for 15p each, I got caught very quickly, just as with the adult magazine pages, but I always had that nature. So whenever you see something in your children, encourage it. Because that natural ability gets quelled in us. Get a job, get proper job, get security, get safe. There's no safety net in a place where you can be fired. Your greatest safety is to fail, fail some more, fail again. You fail on your way to succeeding until you failed so many times, you know all the permutations and equations that can go wrong, you circumvent them. And then you end up in a place where you actually understand business. Mm. And because of your experience, you know a few people. And then what do you do? You build teams and you bring them together again. That's it. How did you get that sort of resilient um, attitude towards it? Because I think one of the issues that within our community we face with young people, especially I remember being a young person, that's sort of like, you wanted to be rich by your 21. You want to be the youngest in charge. So failure, to some extent, even in our minds, we build up this idea that failure is not an option. Yeah. So whilst you're there, and I agree with you that failure is a good thing and you can fail your way to success and yeah. actually you learn from fail, failure. We, we are so afraid of it in our community. Yeah. Um, how do you get past that? And how do you raise young people to remove the immediate gratification idea and to actually learn that every loss can be a lesson? Well, we fail all the time. Um, I, I lived in a private rental in New Cross opposite the Big Sainsbury's that's there now, before the Big Sainsbury's was there. And my rent was £80 every week, irrespective of my position in life. So that means go get the money, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if you really think you can lay down and wallow in anything, um, you're mistaken. That'd be it, it'd be a wrap. So I lived there four years to the day. You can't fail. You can have daily failures, but you can't fail at the end of the month. You gotta make it. So these are things that you realize, your security, the roof over your head, these things. And I, I, I being homeless, you would never know it because when I was a younger man, I always had the talents of um, young ladies, but I've lost everything I've had three times. So these things, brother, is about your resilience. And there are very few young men in their first sexual encounter who have the greatest outcome. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? They get right back on the horse, right? <laughs> That's what business is like for me. Business is like sex. It's one of these things that no matter how badly it went, I love it. I enjoy it. Business in and of itself irrespective of the business in sector I love business just making deals negotiating learning as well 
speaking with teams. And then what you do is you cross-pollinate um, methods and the best methodology and put them into different businesses. And then you'll see that those things thrive and that's where innovation comes in. So then we don't want to be innovative because we're not going to experiment. But when you experiment, you come up with innovation and we're the people who create everything. But we're not the best at capitalising on what we create. Mm. Culturally, do you, think, yeah, do you think that's the issue? Like, there's a cultural issue? Because, I mean, I work in a sector where the term that is used, and even if you think about the term, we would hate it, but the term is used, exploitation. Mm -hmm. you, when you have a business idea, you need to exploit it very Absolutely. quickly. And we have so much culture. Like, I can't remember who was saying it, but... We create so many jobs. Amos Wilson, actually, I was reading his book recently, and he was yeah. saying, we create so many jobs, but we create them for other people in terms of our music, fashion, all of these types of things. So how is it that we could um, learn that capitalist um, um, skill of, of capitalising on our ideas and our, on our culture? Let's take capitalism out of the equation, because the first thing we do is we equate a lot of these terms with a nefarious intent. So let's just deal with the free market. The free market's always existed. Um, if you have been in Ghana and you were using cowrie shells as a currency, somebody might have provided a service, you give them a couple of cowrie shells. We need measurements for these things. Just because of the nature of our minds, there must be a fair exchange, reciprocity. So what we have been taught is to actually be ashamed of any commercial gain that we might have. And then where they create the big divide between us is for the rest of us to look at that one that succeeded as a demon and demonize them. If what I'm saying is wrong, why is Jay-Z seen as the Illuminati? Mm -hmm. Why are there documentaries, I use that term very loosely, yeah, yeah. childlike yeah. references mm. to Jay-Z being a devil worshipper who swallows souls? Mm. Because you've got someone who's out front who's economically successful in many industries and creating freedom and the understanding of the concept of commercial wealth for African people. So what's the first thing you want to do with that man? Isolate him and demonize him. And then who's better at that than doing it than anybody else? Us. So your own people that you're fighting for are your biggest critics. And not because you're abandoning them, not because you're leaving them behind, they recognize your philanthropy. So don't look for your community endorsement. Mm. Forget this thing of being a leader. Mm. Just do. A hundred, a hundred. That is big, actually. And I think that's a, a, a massive les um, message, a lesson for people out there in the community who are trying to strive for community, um, com like to do community things because you can get pinned down, myself included. Like sometimes you're thinking, oh, like, what, what is it it's going to take for me to do this? But sometimes it's not about talking or trying to convince other people to do it. Like you're saying, if you lead by example, you, you get to it. So I want to come back, especially on that conversation around yeah. Jay-Z and some of our black leaders and how we demonize them sometimes ourselves and within our community. But I wanted to keep it on you for a little while. So yeah, by the time you was 18, um, you were already working within business and you were, or you, you clearly had it on your mind that you wanted to do business. So how do you, end up falling from, you know, doing those things where you're selling cards at school and things like that to the point where you're now engaging in, you know, actual business and you're learning the, the, the scope of, um, you know, registering a company and things like this that a lot of people in our community who are business minded mm -hmm. might have no idea about uh, how to do. Well, the first thing is you're only going to get so far, you're only going to get to a particular level mm. without being seen in any business whether you're selling T-shirts out your door, whether you're selling Coke, whether you are selling um, magazines, you've got to understand the principles of legitimate business. Mm. If you don't know them, learn them. So what we do as a race is we remain criminalized. When the Polish came here, they came here smuggling women within the sex trade. Mm. Off the back of that, they established all these buildings, businesses you might see in Clapton, Hackney and East London. Um, and anywhere else, they're a Polish. So this actual shop was a red pig, which is a Polish, it was a Polish deli. It just happens that they didn't have the population to support it. So they got another one in Wilsdon. Now, what that tells you is there is an ability to make a translation 
from criminal into legitimate business. So the first thing I recommend for anybody, whether your business is legitimate or illegitimate, is find a mentor that can bridge the gap from where you are to where you need to be. Because where you are right now is for function. But how long do you function as a man before you start looking for life? You are existing. So the fact that you can go and buy a car for cash isn't a problem. Because an unexplained wealth order will confiscate your car that you bought for cash. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you would have to understand is that you got to pay tax. Mm -hmm. You want to know about the biggest um, illegitimate business in this country? Heroin. Yeah. So, black people aren't importing that. Turkish people import heroin. Pakistanis import heroin. Mm -hmm. Afghans import heroin. The Colombians in the Elephant and Castle imported cocaine. Mm -hmm. And what they did was... You have the people to front businesses. Yep. So if you went to Green Lanes and there were a 24-hour green grocer, if the business make money, it make money. Mm -hmm. If it don't make money, it make money. Oh, and then you pay tax. Yeah, yeah. And then they have charities and foundations. Mm -hmm. You know what the charities and foundations do? Take donations, mm -hmm. which build the community. Mm -hmm. Now, can you keep tax? That's a question. No, no. Um, yeah, you can actually. Yes. Wait, wait, no, can you keep tax? So, right, let's start from the tax beginning. Tax credits, but yeah, but, but all that sort of stuff. <laughs> Leave tax credits. Right, cool, cool, cool. Tax credits are a trap that if I give you them, I mm. can take them away. True. Which is why I don't deal with. Welfare or tax credits. Hey. <laughs> so now I'm free to. Do as you wish. And say. What you like. Okay. 100, 100. So. Freedom. Let's go back to. Whether this thing makes money, yeah. it makes money. If it doesn't make money, it makes money. Yeah. Taxation. Mm -hmm. So if you want to actually invest your money in your community, instead of in a country where there is taxation with no representation, mm -hmm. you would make a donation, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. To a charity, yeah. which is Universal Reciprocity mm -hmm. and Balance. Yeah. These are the things that make one last. Mm -hmm. But drug dealers, by and large, don't... Um, Support the community, do they? In any economic way. Because you seem to stunt on people mm -hmm. because that's how you see yourself. Yeah. There's still a small component. You see, as a man, you must evolve whatever you're doing. And the minute you've decided that you're going to stagnate in any area, you've decided to stay in a criminal class. Mm -hmm. When you stay in a criminal class, I'm going to come and ask for proof of ownership, which with no paper trail, you cannot provide. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to look after these goods for you. <laughs> Go look him more down further. <laughs> and when you figure it out, you come talk to us mm -hmm. with receipts mm -hmm. and proof of income. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, What do you think it is about our community then, why we haven't been able to make that transition that so many other communities have done? And like you say, it is repeated um, across the uh, board, like I, uh, earlier we mentioned um, Kennedy, we were talking about the Kennedy family yeah. and Irish immigrants to America, Italian-American immigrants to America. A lot of it, uh, the initial people who had power or wealth from those communities were from the criminal class, but they also t tended to have an interest or in their community. Yes. But why is it that our community, is it that we're, is a taught thing or is it something that we've just internalised and now through hip-hop and like you're saying, through stunting, the idea that, you know, I'm not just going to make it, I'm going to take your girlfriend. There's a really an obsession yeah, yeah. in hip-hop with yeah. taking your girlfriend and taking your wealth or stunting on this you. Is, this is about low self-esteem. Mm. But before we go into that, mm. so let me ask you a question. So you're a Kennedy. Kennedys are Catholics. Mm. They're Irish Catholics. Yeah. So where do Catholics go to school? Catholic schools. Catholic school. Yeah. So if you go to a Catholic school, you are embedded in your... Community community mm. so you actually have a community mm -hmm. which is underpinned by a faith yeah. now whether you still kill and do whatever you're still a catholic right because yeah, yeah, yeah. catholic priests molest children yeah, yeah, yeah. okay mm -hmm. but what they have is an infrastructure yeah. which is on solid foundation so you ask the question what they're in where their indoctrination in where their indoctrination lies mm is in being a stable part of their community. It's inbred in them. Mm. 
So you go to church to learn to be a man, if you can manage to do that without being molested by a father. And you understand your role within your community. So when you go out and you steal as a criminal, it's to bring it back home to your community. So now when you deal with African people, um, where do we go to school? State schools. State schools run by? The system. Government by white. Europeans. <laughs> right. Let's just call them their technical name. They're Europeans. So if we're Africans from the continent of Africa, they're Europeans from the continent of Europe. Okay. So because they kidnapped us and they say that slavery is over, they still had an agenda to keep us subservient. So we are, we are indoctrinated to... Europeans. No, we are no by Europeans. Oh, by Europeans. We are indoctrinated to, to their system to do as they want us to do. To serve. To serve. Oh, okay. Fantastic. Now, if your whole indoctrination True. as a youth has been to serve, so you are taught to go to school to get a education, apparently, a degree for a job. Where you are employed by Europeans. Okay. <laughs> so getting these questions right now. <laughs> this circle yeah. has continued. So remind me why you're asking me the question why the cycle would have broken. Mm. Mm, fair enough. Because I was put it to you that we've had, I suppose, Malcolm X, yeah. Marcus Garvey, yeah. Martin Luther King, and many people, maybe, okay, those guys, and many people who have come and actually delivered a message similar to what we're saying now. A message. Of, mm, but and a movement with um, Garvey. Mar you see, Garvey achieved greater heights mm. than anybody. Um, unfortunately, because of the exponential success he realized in creating a thousand employees in Harlem, when Europeans were jumping off roofs um, because of the stock market crash, yeah. the government, and in particular, this um, homosexual transvestite, <laughs> um, What's his name again? Hoover, Hoover. Hoover, targeted him. Mm. But that was also based on his insecurities yeah. of emasculation. Mm. Now, seeing a strong, proud black man who didn't talk, it's not a message. Mm. He demonstrated when you have a worldwide circulation magazine that's in three languages, you demonstrate when you have a multitude of businesses within an ecosystem that employs a thousand people, you demonstrate. So that demonstration is a move too far for a transvestite alternative um, lifestyle who can't express himself in society yeah. and what was Garvey doing fully expressing himself in society mm. now we've never taken on the state so when you understand the full power of the state is law just mm. no, it's right people, yeah. so I can create any legislation to support my nefarious agenda mm. that I like now in mm. universal law is wrong mm -hmm. but in legislative law is right because mm -hmm. you create the framework in which you will win yeah. have you ever seen a river without banks no no mm. those banks are legislation law political party policy mm -hmm. so you just decide you're going to come in and you're going to change up this thing <laughs> no sir mm -hmm. you're not going to change up this thing and with um garvey he had no intention of attacking their system. It was, first of all, psychological emancipation mm -hmm. for Africans and then physical repatriation. Yeah. But what were Africans at this time? Um, they're, they're definitely the source, but definitely. Um, I suppose they were just coming out of slavery. So they were a key, they were, I mean, were they key to the, you? you? They were a key, cheap resource. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. You have, Into US and the West. you have a cheap resource yeah. that doesn't say no mm. based on the indoctrination mm. yeah. who are complicit with you coming into their community and making money. Mm. So if we break this down to its essence, and the reason I love um, the highest form of intelligence is base. Mm. The lion eats the antelope 
because his belly is rumbling. Not because he's attractive, <laughs> not because he's jealous, <laughs> but because he's hungry. Yeah, yeah. So you see Europeans, mm -hmm. you are a threat because you are a commercial opposition mm -hmm. and no other reason than that. You mm -hmm. can, anything else around it. Mm -hmm. Here are my people, my good Negroes yeah. who serve. Yeah. You're coming along with all these ideas about Africa and freedom and pride and the wearing uniforms. They don't belong in the US military. These niggas is wearing swords and mm -hmm. they got epilepsy and they got... Yeah, and all you that. are creating a nation inside of a nation, which is a highly dangerous concept based on the economic value that those Negroes represent. Mm -hmm. You are a security threat, mm -hmm. which must be annihilated, but we cannot assassinate you physically. Mm -hmm. So the assassination is... To denigrate you or to try and make you... Character mm -hmm. assassination. Mm -hmm. So, oh. Europeans have mastered the art of character assassination, right? So, when you look at the contemporary character assassination, we know that there are many European child molesters, rapists and sexual deviants. Mm -hmm. But the fact that those European high-ranking artists or officials um, won't be struck from the history books because they preserved their lily white names. Mm -hmm. Now, because they've mastered the art of character assassination and erasing our history, you see what they did with Bill Cosby. Mm -hmm. So the first thing they did, and it's not for me to say whether that he's not guilty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm now talking about the modus operandi of erasing mm -hmm. the entire existence of his works, mm -hmm. which we may have found virtue in. So the Cosby show was about the 2.5 child American family. Mm -hmm. Two African professionals with children erased from so-called mainstream TV. Now, when they own the rights, that means it's not going to get licensed to anybody else. Okay, then different world. He took the journey of his daughter going to university and then even after it left her, it bloomed into its own show. Mm -hmm. So this made African-Americans, there was a spike university. in university attendance, yeah, yeah. which was due to what? Mm -hmm. A show. Mm -hmm. Because a show is an idea. Mm -hmm. So I just take children, like every day I feed my son hamburgers, right? There's your hamburger, go to your bed. Mm -hmm. There's your hamburger, go to your bed. And one day, because I'm tired, I just turn, super. You want um, hamburgers or hot dogs? Yeah, I say. <laughs> oh, you just turned on the switch mm -hmm. of choice. Mm -hmm. You mean I've got options? Mm -hmm. Wait, wait. Mm -hmm. I love hot dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, goddamn. Let's see what else is in this kitchen. Mm -hmm. So now I have a roving mind. You see, Europeans have an agenda to stunt the roving mind in Africans. That's the game. You see, the more your mind roves, the more you... What do you think about um, equal rights? You think we should all have equal rights? Mm. Yeah? I mean, that's the idea, yeah, yeah. No, I'm asking you. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm just asking you the question as a man. Okay, so, yeah. would, you, would you fight for equal rights? Probably, yeah, naturally, yeah. Naturally. Okay. Sure. I want to be equal with Europeans. Because mm -hmm. it's entirely possible that through my creative makeup, with sweat equity with my brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. I may surpass them. Of course. But I would have to extrapolate myself from their system. Mm -hmm. I would have to extrapolate myself from their permissions. Mm -hmm. And I would have to extrapolate my um, conscious mind from their judgment mm -hmm. because it's irrelevant to me. Mm -hmm. It's not within my interests. Yeah. So uh, this bottle may be interesting, mm -hmm. but it's not within my interests. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it's not worth me advocating for, exploring. And when I say it's not worth me advocating for this bottle because it's not within my interest, what's the first thing that somebody will say to you when you advocate for African people? What about such and such group? What about such and such group? Yeah. So um, if it were Chinese New Year mm -hmm. and Soho gets completely pedestrianized yeah. so they can celebrate, yeah. it's because they advocate for themselves mm -hmm. they advocate economically they lobby as businesses mm -hmm. of a particular borough and there's a union that is 
built on solid foundations. So now when you come to an African community where it's easy to take one because there's no code and give them shrapnel, the foundation is based, it's, it's as solid as baby shit. I want to come to that, especially your question around code. But one yeah. thing that you said that was interesting to me was um, what Garvey had gone up against and what, what went up against him was the state. And we the had never, apparatus. up to that point, dealt with the state. After, after, well, we had to some extent, but not like that in terms of a movement. We I'd, had, but not in terms of the free market. That's it. Do you feel like we as a community um, have, to this day, um, come to understand what the state upper rent, um, upper Apparandus is, have you come to understand how the state works, how politics works, and why is it that we've stunted in understanding these key things, such as, such as politics, economics, who makes what decisions, where you could go to get what grants, yeah. who you complain to, the difference between an MP and a councillor, like, why is it that as a community we've just completely zoned out of these types of situations? Because, by and large, we have a very rudimentary education, and those of us that get degrees, mm believe that we are educated mm. oh god damn you got a two one so that's it yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're good to go yeah, yeah. for perpetuity mm -hmm. so there's no more when you when you deal with the dichotomy of a lot of full cups or people who believe they have no stake in a the system there's no investigation mm. as how to deal with these people based on their own remember i said there's no such thing as a river without banks yeah, to deal with their own legislative measures mm -hmm their own bylaws, rules and regulations. So a public servant is accountable, right? Now you can speak to me as hot as you like. I just wait for you to finish talking. I got your name. I'm putting you in your own system. You can feel as hot as you like. And on that day, you can feel whiter than the snowman. But I'm gonna let you know you're accountable because there are balances, measures, and checks to pull your collar. It's about your own confidence to utilize those balances, measures, and checks. I don't have the articulation. I don't know this. So what? Mm. Learn, mm. ask questions. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as a stupid question that's within your interests. Sometimes you think maybe pride and arrogance gets in the way and people don't want to learn because they want to pretend like they know everything already. Well, Leave arrogance for a second. Pride will stop people asking questions that they think are silly. Um, pride will also stop people from seeking assistance. So one thing that I will say is the most functional people on this planet have the greatest support networks. And the most dysfunctional people on this earth have no support networks. No mentors, no points of reference to move forward, no networks. So when people belong to societies, you would say those are very strong networks built on concrete foundations and systems, right? So African people have those as well as Europeans. Mm -hmm. You see, Europeans are, uh, don't hold the patent on societies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We actually created them mm -hmm. and they never, ever went anywhere. Mm -hmm. So when you understand the nature of brotherhood and sisterhood and fraternity of your own, you are closing all knowledge and skills gaps. So me personally, I'm not separated by, from any information by more than one degree, one phone call. And whether it's a surveyor, a solicitor, and I have in my phone, the solicitors are compartmentalized into commercial, property, criminal, um, you name it, mm -hmm. intellectual property. Mm -hmm. So once you understand that you must compartmentalize all of these things, these are all community members, members of the village, who have a function. Mm -hmm. And you just utilize every professional for their function. Or go and complain at a bus stop and speak to lay people mm -hmm. and get a Facebook like. You know what a Facebook like sounds like in the real world? I wanted to, um, so with um, our community, for example, how do we bridge some of those gaps, for example? So for myself, like university educated, got my 2-1, but come back to Excellent. community to try and work within the community. But there are, like you say, several of like my peers who would have went to university and me, and they didn't look back after they left university in That's terms okay. of community work. That's okay. okay. It's fine. Yeah. So knowing who you are, mm. you're here with content over everything today. Birds of a feather flock together. Mm. Seek those of a similar ilk. Start 
the foundations of whatever institution you desire to create mm. and then recruit more of a similar ilk. The, this is not a push because you'd be pushing on an open door mm. when you find those of a similar ilk. Mm. And what will happen is very quickly and the beauty of the world today is we have these digital tools to make ourselves widely known. Mm. Those of a similar ilk will run to you. Those of a similar ilk are builders. So if you're an architect and you've got your glass fitter, you've got your chippy, you've got your electrician, you've got your plumber, and you've got your brickies, mm. all you need to do is create the architecture to lay down each component mm -hmm. of this home. You're going to establish a home yeah. because you have no skills or knowledge gaps. What you need to practice is project management. Working with a small team of people and putting them to work. How will people follow you and jump over a cliff for no money and dedicate hours of their time and intellectual capital? Personalita, social skills, understanding management, how to reward your fellow brothers and sisters, how to promote them because this thing is reciprocal. So if you don't take advantage of all of those factors in upskilling yourself, you will never be the project manager that an architect needs to be. Because now you've got to mix art with science and propaganda. And when you understand that trisecta of art, science and propaganda, you will always be able to merge talents. Your third eye will always identify talents, but your third eye will always identify those of a similar ilk. A hundred, that is perfect, that's banging. I mean, when it comes to not just recognising people of a similar ilk, but building your, your team, and um, or understanding that you're building a team now, how do you sort of... Okay, so you've um, gathered around people around you who are similar ilk, mm -hmm. um, and now you've got this idea that... What, what are the first steps, for example? Just say, for example, you want to set up a business, you want to set up a yeah. shop. What are the first steps that you really take with your team or with the people around you who have those skills? So, you know, for example, you've got this business lawyer who knows how to set up business yep. law. What do you just do? Like, just lay it out for people who might be interested in setting up business. Or how so, do they, like I say, they... I, I will tell you where I'm at now. Mm. So my whole life, what I had were bootstraps businesses yep. that relied on me. Mm. Now, we are just about to launch a business which is based on sweat equity. Mm. So all of the partners have a huge experience in their particular area and then those partners bring a different value to the business where there are no skills or knowledge gaps that are required within that business. So 10 partners, 10 different skill sets. That is a corporate business. The art you need to learn for that one is called delegation. Don't duplicate anybody's role. Don't... Um, enable anybody to be in a conflicting position find the strengths of each person and let them play to their talents mm. so what you get is now a corporate business with a board of directors mm. in their respective areas mm -hmm. we don't talk about corporate business we make it up as we go along mm. so like this this is ragtag like this is made up yeah. um this what look raggedy rap yeah, but, you know. It's functional. Exactly. Do not get it twisted. Mm. But when you're dealing with a corporate business, knowing what I know now, you bring the talents on board and you carve up the equity of that business based on the respective talents. Mm. So now, if you're worried about employing people, just because you had an idea, you can either own 100% of nothing or you can own 10% of something substantial based on a million pounds worth of sweat equity mm -hmm. so when you got a million pounds worth of sweat equity everybody's firing in their position right mm -hmm. so now you've got a board of experts who are all working for free no, no they ain't working for you baby they're working for themselves but in working for themselves you are all working for each other for the entity which is your ongoing concern so if you know there's a lot of legals it makes sense for you to bring a solicitor on board as a stakeholder now you're not paying for any of your legals, right? Yeah. If it's a digital business, it makes sense for you to bring on a web and graphic designer. 
It makes sense for you to bring in an SEO person. It makes sense, it makes sense, it makes sense, it makes sense. Put yourself in the world and forge these relationships with your cabal of people that you can rely on. One thing I want to say, take this term trust out of the equation. Okay, I want to go to that. So you speak on trust, what I your perspective gonna, on trust say, I think one of the key issues, because we've been talking about black economics yeah. um, a lot recently, and one of the key issues that always comes up is trust. And trust between the black community seems to be lesser than mm. other groups, but not just other no, it's groups. Not. It's not, it's not. It's not, it's, it's not that trust is less than other groups. It's that the understanding of what the concept is, is less. Mm. So, don't get twisted. White people don't like each other. White people love, don't like themselves. A lot of Asians don't like themselves. Like blacks don't like themselves. And then there are those who love themselves and understand. So who's going to go through? Those who understand. You see, if you are mentally poor, you're usually economically poor. And if you get economically rich quick, you're going to fall down quick too. So your, your own self-esteem will enable you to do things that people with a greater understanding, sorry, a greater knowledge, and when I talk about intellectual knowledge, you see, knowing is doing. And when you align your intellect with your spirit, you start to call the things in. So I'm not going to go down the road of metaphysics, but that is exactly what it is. So when you engage your spirit and you align it with your intellect, you don't have any gaps. Don't get it twisted. You're still developing as a person. Um, you develop every day and you're going to evolve, hopefully, until the day you pass. I hope to transcend as a young man in an old body. Um, but the important thing is recognizing that what you can rely on people for. See that broad encompassing term trust? Yeah. Break it down. Break it down. I can rely on you. You might be a gambling degenerate. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to let you know where any money. <laughs> but I can rely on you to do the contracts. I can rely on you to give a presentation. Mm -hmm. So we're always going to limit the exposure to damage. Mm -hmm. Herein lies the secret to what Europeans, Asians and everybody else does successfully. Here's the span off. Because what a lot of people would say, and maybe this is a negative, but some people would say that the problem is when it comes to black businesses, people don't like being put into boxes, for example. So they will go to work every day at office chair working so for immature. Europeans. That's so immature. Like, you can't box me? I should box you. Because you sound stupid. What do you do? I don't like to put a title on it. Now put a title on it. If you don't have a multifaceted role, forget this Coco Chanel business. Define what you do. There are a few people who have multifaceted roles that will cross merge and pollinate different roles and have a wider overview. Very few people. So once you know what you do within your field, be the leader of that and fit within the matrix of solutions that creates a tangible industry and you will derive income from it, guaranteed. Because you have marketeers, you have closers, you have people who will invoice, that's their skill. Everybody plays to their talents. That's what a corporate business is. Don't think that a corporate business is because you go and set up a limited company. That doesn't mean anything. Any imbecile, I was an imbecile, who set up a limited company, it didn't mean anything. Do you think that increased my intellectual capital? Do you think that increased my experience? Yeah. No. The experience? No. no. Hey, when it fell down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But the Just limited okay. company does nothing. Yeah, yeah, 100, 100. Having a corporate account does no thing. Yeah. You evolve by your experiences, which increase your intellectual capital and your skill sets. Yeah. Um, people will always look at me. It doesn't matter how dark it gets. I don't get concerned. I don't panic. I don't get into that mode. That's based on experience. That's what my 20s was for. So at this stage, while you're panicking, I strategize. I will break the problem down, get on the phone and start putting out small fires, which lead to the big fire. Otherwise, the operation falls down. So you have the desire to educate yourself to get to that. Or you don't have 20 years experience you have 20 times one year's experience. And that's a choice. 
A hundred. All right, cool. So let's talk black economics now or group mm -hmm. economics because yeah. there's a lot of talk about this and how to do it. Several different people have set up um, different groups. There's yep. always, obviously historically we've always done partners and things like this. But obviously there's things like, I, I would say for me personally, a cooperative seems to be the next step from a partner. And it's very strange to me that we as a community haven't done that yet in terms of let's put our minds together now, let's t t take some ownership or, you know, um, a real estate syndicate and things like, well, there's been some of those, but then... There are. Yeah. And see, let's not take for granted, look. Um, all of these solutions mm. are for those with the magic eye who identify people of, of a similar ilk. Mm. However, based on this term you used earlier, the all-encompassing term, trust, mm. they won't make themselves known mm. to the wider community. Mm -hmm. um, there are a few that do, which is for economic gain, because they understand that teaching is a business. Mm. So, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a business. Oh, yeah. They paid to learn, yep. and you should pay to learn. <laughs> so when Samuel came and did our economic seminar, the first day club, he left us with a term. Mm -hmm. When you pay, you pay attention. Mm. Why the hell would I pay this great cost to gain the intellectual capital I have? To give it away to you for free. Mm. Would I take goods and give them to you for free? Mm. No. There must be reciprocity in there. Service for goods. Mm. Economics for goods or services. Reciprocity. Mm. So we have an expectation that things should be free. That's based on how you see yourself. Mm. When a man tells me that. Oh, you think you should do this for free? <laughs> Who are you talking to? You sound effeminate. You got the same 24 hours as me. <laughs> And you think I'm supposed to give you something for free? Like you represent no value to my life. I'm not going to see you again. And I should give you for free. You sound effeminate. And you got the same 24 hours as me. So I don't know what you're looking for. And I ask these people. If you went into your job tomorrow. And they told you they weren't going to pay you for a week. Would you work for that week? So go look him or down for it. <laughs> 100. One thing though that I noticed though. Um, because a lot of criticism that come at black um, business and sometimes black business owners could give biz, um, criticism back about the community not supporting them. Yeah. What something that I see that you've done is you create a business here that it's what people want. It's, there's demand. People want to buy suits. People want blazers. Don't do that because you, you, you're going the wrong way. Okay, no, but just, business mm. is... Let's just break this down for all time. Let's do it. Right. Let's do it. It's a hot sunny day. Mm. You thirsty. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's water. I identified your problem, I solved your problem, 100. pay me my money. 100. Okay, what? so if there's no necessity, then create necessity. Mm. Okay, mm. social media was a slow burn, mm -hmm. but knowing the addictive nature, the growth was always going to be exponential, right? The problem they identified was the newest human emotion. What do you think the newest human emotion is? Because by years, hundred years ago, you wouldn't have been able to experience this emotion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But today, you can experience this emotion. Um, I don't know, like... Boredom, my brother. <laughs> Boredom. Yeah. You would have been too busy working, mm. Mm. and then when you come home, you're tired and you have to True. eat and sleep. True. But today, there's automation that takes the place of those roles that would have made you tired. So what I did, identify the problem. Solve the problem, mm. pay me my money. Mm. So, if there is not a problem, you create the problem mm. and you solve it. So, entertainment solves, Order. That's it, yeah. which is why it's monetizable. 100. Okay. 100. But that, I mean, if I'm a black business now and I'm creating. No, um, no, no, no. Let's, let's not talk, take black out of the equation for 30 business, seconds. Yeah. I just told you what business is. Yeah, 100. So do you think if you're black, mm. uniquely, you can just start selling rainbow hats? No. No, because it's not a problem. Mm. Do, you know where, do you know where rainbow hats are a problem? <laughs> if you go to the Pride March, <laughs> people don't know who I am. I want a rainbow hat, so they know. Mm -hmm. Other than that, you're making it up. And you know what happens to made-up businesses? Not a goddamn team. A hundred. So I think, but this, this is what I was trying to get at because I think sometimes when we get these ideas, I want to do this. Sometimes you, like you're saying, you have to analyze the business field. Is Absolutely. there a demand? 
can I create a demand? Yep. And if, if you can't do either of these things, if there's no demand and you can't create one... You and live in in fantasy world. And I'll, I'll come with you on a Sunday <laughs> to go chase unicorns, but not for long. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. Okay, 100. So what, I mean... Uh, what things are you involved with? I mean, I've heard you mention things about a credit union. I mean, is there anything that you'd like to promote with regards to black business or black economics or no. group? E no, no, no. Mm? I'm not talking to anybody um, over 30 mm. uh, for this reason. If you want to do it, then my number's public domain and you know me mm. or you can get to know me. Um, people come and approach me from the street and come into here every day. They phone me every day. If you want me to entertain you and say nice things so you can feel good in your armchair, I'm not interested anymore because nothing's going to change. And where we're at at this stage is just in the doing. So my advice for anybody who has a Facebook page who is a professional is create your LinkedIn profile and promote what you do professionally and find those of a similar ilk and build. You know, my LinkedIn page looks like it looks like my facebook page except i talk about business and i have 1800 african professionals as contacts why don't i have any asians or europeans it's not because i dislike them it's because we feel that we should be waved this way or that way to perform in a particular way for their approval and by and large that's to do with economics because people want jobs I'm the one man on LinkedIn not looking for a job. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for delivery partners. Yeah, yeah. So I use it as a recruitment platform. So when we talk about particular things, we have to understand the nature of each beast. Mm -hmm. If I'm using Instagram, it's for the intergenerational gap. Yeah. Now I'm an old foot. Because mm -hmm. me at 44, mm -hmm. uh, most 30 year olds aren't going to be interested in looking at what I do in my life. But then when I start conveying certain information to them, if I said to you, one minute, you're a shutter. Okay, so you got 50 quid right now in cash, mm. in a handbag. Mm. All right, here's what you do. A bit more than a shoe bag. It's at home still. Here, there you go. <laughs> so if you got 50 quid in cash, who do you know around you that has good credit mm. and is straight that you can rely on? This person. All right. Set up your company, go open a bank account. Da -da 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 mm. Then what do you do? Go get a shop or go get an office and start to invoice for your service and start paying your NI and start doing your this. Like this, this is a shop. So I had, I remember the first time I had 40 grand in one sitting and um, I thought, yeah, and I was a bad guy to um, however that came about, um, which is why things melt. So when I speak about the universal is for a reason. It's because you can get it, you don't appreciate it, and it melts. So I melted because I was an idiot. I did, I, I was, as, as much as I might thought I was a businessman, and whatever, I wasn't. So I melted. But I could have set up two of these shops with that money. So to get a shop like this and fill it with stock, but the stock isn't going to sell itself. So I'll give you an idea. You're somebody. And now you got all the tools that I didn't because there was not social networking or the internet like this. Yeah, yeah. So you could shoot a show on styling every single day in your business and make your, your shop the place where shots come, mm. where it's attractive mm. for them to come. In fact, you could have a tailor's bench in your shop. And whether you make money, you make money. Whether you don't make money, you make money. Mm. That's just an example. But... At some point, when that ceases to make sense, because either they're going to clap you or the boy of them are going to clap you, mm -hmm. you have options to change up where you are do. Mm -hmm. And the minute you have a corporate account and a business as an ongoing concern, you can move into any business, can't you? Mm -hmm. And now you start to attract the kind of peer base mm -hmm. that are going to enable you in that space. Mm -hmm. That says so called evolution. Mm -hmm. Evolving is what the Kennedys did. Mm -hmm. Now, there's one thing that our community don't do in particular and we don't have a criteria for why we do what we do as a young man I had no criteria for how I chose a partner it was based on sex 
<laughs> I had no criteria for whom I would do business with. I had no criteria for why I went somewhere. So we just do it and we make it up. Can that be successful in a scientific way? Impossible. It's random. It's random. So what are we? What are we? As a people, uh, by and large. Random. I mean, we're, we're not doing well. I suppose we're random. We're behind. What we are is we show patterns of mm. randomness. So the dream is always to move somewhere. I always say, if you want to be a property developer, the more bullets and blood you see in your area, the more property you should buy. Mm -hmm. Because at some point, as in all areas, when this is clean, your property is going to be... So go and, so go and look at Labrick Grove. Mm -hmm. All of that was black owned. Yeah. Now there are 10 million spots. Mm -hmm. How many black people? Okay, so when you understand the nature of waves, economic waves, political waves, your fear is eradicated, but your fear is in your ignorance. Mm. Fear is always in ignorance. Yeah. And, yeah, and I guess this brings us back to the Jay-Z conversation that was had Absolutely. earlier and the wider conversation in terms of the system. When, mm. when we're looking at, so a lot of people would see, I mean, you had an event I saw in Parliament once. And I remember the first time when I went to Parliament, a lot of people were looking at me like, that's mad. It's like literally a place where babies are eaten and all of this types of thing is happening. That, notwithstanding, that might be true, but we are afraid of things before we even do them. We're Absolutely. afraid of the fight before we fought, fought. I mean, how do you get past that? And how do you get our community to get past that? First of all, you've got to get a balance in yourself. You've got to be comfortable in your own skin because you wouldn't have seen what I was. You just saw me speaking in Parliament. You wouldn't have seen who I was looking out at. So when I'm speaking about Africans um, dealing with a bastardized religion, I was looking at a front row of Nigerians and they're like, no, yes, no. And then there's an Englishman. When I said, Europeans are not in your way. They're lampposts. Just circumvent them. Go to their left or to their right. They have no concern. Don't concern yourself with them. He's got, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so now I'm giving my whole speech to this guy mm -hmm. you're my number one fan I can see that <laughs> I'm really feeling your resonance of your spirit as well mm -hmm. so now my whole speech is for you mm -hmm. then when I finish you right, mate yeah, yeah. <laughs> so first if you have a spiritual balance within yourself there's no part of you that can be intimidated by anything called man mm -hmm. man who believe they're intimidating you may not even like themselves you will know this by how much they keep their own company. Mm. There are people who, um, don't worry about the eye, what they throw out. That's our illusion. Mm. You see that illusion, it brings the magpies out and the magpies give them the validation that they need. Mm. But do you know the only validation that you need? Your own. Your own. Mm. And when you validate yourself, you cease to seek approval from anybody that is the first day that you are spiritually free so the minute that you're not seeking approval hey, you don't like me mm. so what mm. you would know how much i care by how much i try to engage with you <laughs> yeah. you could feel you're the biggest big shot in your bubble you don't matter to me mm -hmm. you don't count and you tell me that's my ego it's possible baby because my ego got me in a room but i know when to turn down the volume on my ego to keep me in the room mm -hmm. do you where's your church Al Sharpton where's your church <laughs> yeah. oh. no, but I, that, that brings me to a, a very very point about power being a relational situation and someone can only have power over you mm -hmm. if you allow them to a certain extent so you've got to be complicit complicit and 100%. whilst there is definitely ex external forces on our community that's held us back when I look at things like even the Stonebridge Park complex and things that we've had within our community, there are also, I think sometimes the bigger, the, the main challenge that we have to defeat is up within ourselves. Absolutely. Otherwise, we're not taking on board a constructive criticism that is necessary to evolve and grow. You see, everybody's looking at growth. And when we wonder why they're encroaching on our patch, it's because we're all competing for limited resources. So whether you black, whether you're an African, European, Asian, Turkish, wherever you're from, you, will, you are all fighting in the free market for limited resources. Now, when they get to our little patch, because this thing is shrinking, 
um, based on the fact that lots of different people are coming over, that the internet has stolen market share. Why do they want our little patch? Because it's valuable. So you, you've come to play five-a-side football and they've brought out a professional 11 with sports science, shin pads, <laughs> trainers, yeah. and everything else, and dietitians, and there's you, just come kick about. Mm. Look at that. Mm. Business is warfare. Politics is warfare. You are fighting for limited resources in a very small space. If somebody has a superior thinking, they will acquire what you currently have which means that you are a community in economic decline. Our role is to grow socially and economically. We need to grow in our social impact and our um, influence. And that doesn't mean that white people doing impersonations of Jamaicans with reggae is of any value to us whatsoever. And we need to grow economically. Why? Don't we grow economically and socially? Is it um, for my, from my perspective? It's been a matter of individualism that too, it's very many people have been trying to do it themselves Absolutely. and and pride that they don't want to turn around and say, "Yo, let's actually work better if we do it together." You're ahead of me. Individualism. So individualism will enable you to go and do whatever you like, right? However, if you're an African, an Asian or a European, you are obligated to promote, preserve, and uphold your culture. Because without your culture, you're absolutely nothing. So then the first betrayal is that we put our children into schools run by Europeans who have no empathy with or for our children or our community, no respect for us as parents. So what's the best outcome? Schools no, what's the best outcome? Oh, of that, oh, we're of that equation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> 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 no, I think some of us get through it. Some of us get through it. All right, but like you say, just about the best you know, outcome. You see is what you said? Some it. of us get through it, mm. <laughs> brother. Just. If you set a an eighteen story building on fire, some of us will yeah. get out. Yeah. But what's going to happen to the vast majority? Mm -hmm. The demago did. Mm -hmm. So it's not a system for success, is it? No. And we need to be creating, I did mention socioeconomic advancement. Mm. So, where would the socioeconomic advancement part come from if we don't promote, preserve, and uphold our culture, mm. which is based to a state? Mm -hmm. So, we are stateless mm. because we are black. So, you can say you're Jamaican. Bajan, whatever. No Caribbean island is constitutionally run by African interests. Mm -hmm. If you're from Guadeloupe or Martinique, they are constitutionally French. If you're from Jamaica, Barbados, they are constitutionally British. So in understanding the nature of that, you're Palestinian. Mm -hmm. You're stateless. Mm -hmm. So you're at the mercy of Israel, right? Mm -hmm. So when they create any legislation... In terms of our universal understanding, we might call that terrorism. When they kidnap us and deport us, when we're legal and legitimate citizens who've paid taxation into this system for 60 years. However, because you are stateless, like Palestinians, there is an international silence, and they call this thing anonymity. Just like Israel has a privilege of nuclear anonymity. What does that mean? Uh, the state system, the State Department doesn't ask, and they don't tell. <laughs> what do you say? I really talk? Mm -hmm. We don't ask, they don't tell, nuclear anonymity. Mm -hmm. Yes, they have 400 warheads. Okay, cool. Nobody ask. Jamaica don't tell, we get deported. Mm -hmm. That is terrorism. Mm -hmm. Where I can come in your house with the jackboots kidnap you cuff you and put you on a plane now do you know what happens what term is equal to murder under the uk law kidnap you can get a life tariff so what do you think the reciprocity should be for kidnappers life tariff, no? yeah 
Of course. But, but we're, we're stateless. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But we're not Palestinian. Mm. 100, but I think that is big. I kind of, I think, uh, is there any topics you wanted to touch on really um, before we wrap it up or bring it to a close? Anything that you, any areas you wanted to go into in particular? I want to say to young people, don't believe you have as much time as your confidence would enable you to believe. Invest in yourself every single day. Um, seek wisdom from mentors. These are people who are operating in a vein that you desire to operate in successfully. Go and bathe in that pool. Find them. Um, for shutters, and I'm talking to a percentage who are dealing with the business, not with the joy of the nefarious lifestyle. Because mm. some people are just scum <laughs> and there's nothing you can do with them. I'm saying that. Mm -hmm. Some people are just scum and um, they desire to be nasty when I talk to you. Mm. I'm talking to people who purely for economics have seen an easy route to make money. And knowing that this is a very short lifespan, even if you've been in it for a decade, you on borrowed time, smart as you may think you are. Um, I've known people who bought in a million pounds worth of food and were sitting in their house day trading, who's doing a bend behind the wall now. So don't worry about it. At some stage, it's gonna come for you. Mm -hmm. Start to surround yourself with business experts, whether they're in the construction industry, whether you put your family on the property ladder and go in that way and then come piggybacked into the system, but you must enter the system. Now, there's one other thing that I will say, and this is for wealth. So it cost two and a half grand to create the most sophisticated trust. Trusts lie outside of UK legislation. If you have that money, you can give that money to any family member to set up a family trust. And then you start to build your ownership from that family trust. It cannot be penetrated by the state because it has walls around it. Those walls lie outside of UK legislation. That is wealth protection. There's a reason they can't get inheritance tax off your crib when you pass if it's in trust because it lies outside of UK legislation. So where you've just put yourself is in Switzerland. You as a family or as an individual have just put yourself in the city of London. You are now your own principality. So everything you build within that is generational wealth. Mm -hmm. Start thinking like Kennedy's. This is self-interest. As I say, like, this bottle might be the most interesting thing in the world if you want to sketch it mm -hmm. with a B4 pencil, but it's not within your interests. Mm -hmm. Think about the things that are going to sustain you. Think about legacy, the fact that you like to dip that wick and at the end of that process comes life, mm -hmm. that life is going to depend on you. And if you go and do a bend behind the wall, they're not going to have anything or anybody. And then somebody who may have been in your circle who was the most nefarious is going to prey on them and possibly pedophiles or anything else you leave them open to. So understand the nature of business, understand the nature of investment, understand the nature of those you can rely upon for a particular thing. Now, if you was a full-time criminal, you go and take five quid that you're spending on the chain and give it to a barrister's office who you have a relationship. Because yeah. you know what happens with barristers. You know they get the case the day before, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. And uh, I'm going to tell you a story about... Uh, uh, I went to um, bail out my brethren's brother yeah. in uh, mm -hmm. high security in um, Bromley, mm -hmm. the high, su the high yeah, security yeah, court. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you have to take off your shoes mm. to go through the detector. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the fact that I knew he wasn't going to get bailed because they had him in the TV like Carol Ann. Mm. Carol Ann! Mm. So the judge, the, the barrister's here, <laughs> the judge is looking, and I'm watching the, the barrister's talking 10 to the dozen. Uh, I'm looking at my man. This is good, Malcolm. This is good. But he's in the TV like Carol Ann. I know they're not letting him out. So have your infrastructure. So me as a businessman, I know my infrastructures, those things that represent my interests. If you know you're a full-time criminal, go give a barrister's chambers five quid mm -hmm. and have a relationship mm -hmm. and have your criminal solicitor who communicates with your barrister's office. That five quid sits there, it's not being used. Mm -hmm. It's called insurance policy. Mm -hmm. Insurance is what if shit. Yeah. 
Now, some things are inevitable. Understand that. Also have your corporate solicitor because you need to set up certain things. Yeah. Now, if your name is no good, a solicitor can do those things by proxy. Mm. Use your nut. Think about your interests. Create the entities that are going to sustain you and your family for perpetuity. Because all of these people who go behind the wall and do these big sentences come out. They're irrelevant. A guy might go and work on London Underground at night mm. just so he don't have to deal with people because you're freaking out. Like, if, if you're in large numbers of people and you've been away for a bend, you're going to have panic attacks. These are very real things that people don't talk about. Um, you've not had relationships with women. There's a whole heap of things. I got one of my cousins is got 16 years, and these things are for hard years. Like, you had the opportunities, you had the money as the byproduct from the work. Many things could have been explored, but your ego is the thing that betrays you. Because when you feel yourself a lot, you feel you're invincible, and nobody is. You cannot beat the forces. So understand them and play to the rules. Chess ain't drafts, drafts ain't Ludo. There's different rules for the different games. When you're on road, you, you play in Ludo. You see, when you make the transition, you play in chess. That um, strategic game will have you one step ahead of everybody. Build your entourage that you have the charm and personalita to hold without letting go of money. Then build an entity that is worth something. Because we let a lot of money go. And as quick as we earn it, we give it right back. Now tell me, why would you spend £1,500 on trainers? And and you don't and you. I've got to say I did that. But one minute, fifteen hundred. But one minute, <laughs> but one minute, and you don't own a residential freehold or a commercial freehold. Mm. If you want a business, I give you a business right now. Go to a property consultant seminar. Go purchase a commercial freehold. You'll get planning to turn it into a multiple occupancy residential. You put that in Airbnb and every single thing. You will have rooms rented out between a one hour and 200 quid at least um, seven months of the year. That's going to cover your mortgage. Now, if you've got cash, you take your mortgage, you're able to pay your mortgage, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's it. These things. Yeah, Self-interest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Calm. So if I'm a young person and I have a certain amount of money under my bed and my little shoebox, how do I like get involved with the road CEO movement or how do I contact Dean Okai or, or, or what would my first steps be to sort of thinking about legitimizing that money? Well, the first thing I would say is jump in the pool of knowledge. Um, it's my name, Dean Okai, O-K-A-I, Senior, S-N-R, as the senior to the seed. And uh, the advice is there. I give it freely. And for this reason, where I came from, I could not see a clear road to get to where I am. I made it up. And I wasted so many years in developing that. Because remember I said you fail to succeed, then you fail to succeed, then you fail to succeed. Had somebody given me a black print, I wouldn't have taken as long. I should have been here maybe at 28 years old. I didn't have a black print. So you see the black print. The black print is so they can circumvent the journey and end up at the destination. See, I don't care about the process. I care about the result. Mm -hmm. It's like if I give you money, you think I'm paying you for a service, mm -hmm. do it again. You did it wrong, I paid you. I'm paying for the result. Mm -hmm. So it only matters what your result is. It doesn't matter what people think about you because when you're straight, everybody's going to come on side. And I know we're wrapping up, so. Yes, all right, cool. That was Dean Okai. This is um, Suits Direct, the store. So come down and visit sometime. Check out Dean Okai. Okay, okay. Okay. Let me just make sure I'm getting something right. Okay, okay. 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 I'm, <laughs> I'm going to say... um There's about 20 variations. Simple. <laughs> I'm going to say, probably. But like I say, it's that simple. Like, I found Dean Okai. Like, I've seen some of the work you're doing. Just Google. You'll find him. You can get in contact. You can work with him. And it's it's it's... The work that you're doing is definitely truly inspirational, but it's definitely vital in terms of, like I said, a black print for a lot of young people in our community. Because we've had elders, mm -hmm. some of who have done stuff, like you say, we that we had owned houses in Labrick Grove, we owned it a lot. And 
to some extent, maybe there's some shame that they don't want to come out and show their faces. But what you're doing now as that cross-generational and reaching out to young people is vital. But it's also important that when you do have an older that reaches out to young people, young people have to reach back too and actually create um, an actual community that, that is workable and we can actually learn the lessons from the people who've already gone through it. So Dean, big up, man. Bless for having me, man. Bless you. Content over everything all the time. Content over everything. Content over everything. From your yeah. God, man, say it straight. Man, don't listen to BBC. Man, don't listen to ITV. Listen. C O E. Man, don't listen to BBC. Man, don't listen to ITV. I don't even listen to Sky YG. I just listen to C O E. Man, don't listen to BBC. Man, don't listen to ITV. I don't even listen to Sky YG. Man, just listen to C O E. Man, just listen to C O E. Man, just listen to C O E. If you see me in C O E, cut it over everything. C O E. Man, not even know BBC. Man, not even know ITV. Not even listen to the M U M. They just listen to C O E.